Housing bubble 2.0, more shocking facts have emerged. Check this out. The Fed in shadow foreclosures. The other day we had a video that we'll link below talking about a gentleman by the name of Keith Giroux, who's the real estate analyst for MarketWatch. He showed the delinquency rate was getting extremely bad in mortgages that were held by private banks. So outside of the Fannie and Freddie system. And the banks were doing that because they were waiting or they are waiting for the prices to come up to a certain level to where they can go ahead and foreclose on those borrowers that haven't been making payments and they can recoup 100% of the capital that they have out of pocket. Now, I think that the Fed could be doing the same thing here. Why would the Fed be doing this? Remember, the entire US economy is based on three things, asset prices, debt, and confidence. So my hypothesis is that the Fed could be trying to prop up the housing market, asset prices and confidence, and debt for that matter, by buying these mortgage-backed securities and hanging on to them, even if the payments aren't being made. Let's remember that the Fed's balance sheet contains a lot of mortgage-backed securities. And when I mean a lot, I mean 10% of the entire market. As of right now, the Fed owns about 1.6 trillion in mortgage-backed securities, and the entire market is 15.5. So again, they own about 10% of the entire market. That is huge. Here in 2008, they started buying mortgage-backed securities for obvious reason to get them off the bank's balance sheets because they were toxic and the banks were in jeopardy of going bust if they held them on their balance sheet. Then they started to sell them off and then they started quantitative easing where they had to inject more money into the system and that's when it really skyrocketed from about a trillion here in 2012 all the way up to 2014 where it got up to 1.8 and then in about 2018 they started QT which is quantitative tightening which they were selling those mortgage-backed securities or assets back into the market, taking that money and basically incinerating it to reduce the money supply. Unless you've been hiding under a rock, you know as well as I do that the Fed has been in the market, in the repo market, buying securities, basically another round of quantitative easing. They're not calling it that, of course, but it's in essence the exact same things where they're buying securities from the bank. Now, I did some homework on the New York Fed's website and when this repo madness, if you want to call it that, that's what I call it, starts on October 15th, and they're not only buying treasuries, but they're also buying mortgage-backed securities. On the 15th, they buy 9.5 billion, and it keeps going, 2.4 billion, 20.2 billion, 8.2, 6.7, 13.5, 7.5, and 28 billion just on October 24th. Just in the last week, a little over a week, they've purchased almost a hundred billion worth of these mortgage-backed securities. Technically in the repo market, they're only supposed to hold on to these for a day to 14 days, depending on the contract with the bank that they loan the money to. But we can't audit the Fed. So who knows whether they're keeping these mortgages on their balance sheet or not. Maybe these are more toxic assets, just like they had in 2008, that these banks are trying to get off their balance sheet. The Fed doesn't want the banks to foreclose on these people because they, again, want to prop up the market, asset prices, debt, and confidence. So the Fed's like, whoa, whoa time out. We'll go in there and we'll buy these things from you and we'll just do it under the veil of the repo market. Again, this is a hypothesis. I am not saying that this is what's happening. This is definitely a fact. You go to the Fed's website and you will see this. This is factual. This is factual. The reason why is just a hypothesis, but if you think it through, it makes a lot of sense. The second piece of housing bubble 2.0 data that's just really shocking are home down payments. If you're like me, you thought, you're under the impression that the lending standards prior to the recession, the last recession, were just garbage. No one used down payments, and if you could fog a mirror, you would get a loan. Also, I was under the impression, just because you hear it so often repeated in the media, that everything since then has been completely different, that the lending standards have been impeccable, and no one can possibly get a loan unless they put down at least 20%. 
Well, if you actually look at the data, you see that this is completely fake news. In fact, I want to read you a couple quotes from an article discussing this specifically I just found online. So this article asks the question, what is the average down payment? It says the amount of money to put down on a house will depend on several factors. But look at this next part. Gone are the days of needing to have at least 20% down payment to get approved for a mortgage. Keep in mind, guys, that this is an article from 2016. They go on to say there are special programs that offer low and no, meaning zero, down payment at all. The last data that they pulled in 2016 shows that the average down payment on a house was about $14,000 or only 6% of the purchase price. And again, guys, I want to hammer home the fact that this is not talking about pre-recession. This data that shows that people are only putting 6% down on their home applies to after the bust, not before the bust. Look at this chart. We start here on the left, and this is the average amount in nominal terms of a down payment starting here in 2001 going to 2017. That's our blue line. This red line over here on the right indicates the percentage of down payment. And remember, supposedly the lending standards from 2000 to 2005 and going to 2006 were just horrific. But if you actually look at the data, you see that the lending standards to 2005 were actually very similar, if not better, than they have been from 2013 to the present. The lending standards only got really bad for a quarter or two in 2006, but we make it seem as though it was this entire time and it really wasn't. Now moving on to the next bit of fake news, the 20%, the impeccable standards since the financial crisis. Well, look at this. The standards got just as bad in 2009, 2010. So we've been led to believe this entire time that the lending standards have been really, really solid. But if we look at the facts going to 2017, the average down payment was only 6%. And that translates to about $14,000, but the average home price is about $280,000. So if we think this through, the average borrower that buys a home today initially only has 6% equity. So the market only has to go down by 7% and they're completely wiped out. And as you guys know by watching these videos, I think that the next recession that I think will be caused by the corporate debt market will lead to the bust in housing instead of the housing bust causing the recession like it did in 2008. It'll be in reverse order. And if we have this recession, the unemployment rate spikes. So what happens if the unemployment rate spikes and the average borrower, the average new borrower, only has 6% equity in their home? Home prices go down to their historic trend line, let's say 50%, but even if they don't, let's say they only go down 20 or 30%, these borrowers are massively underwater. The third piece of housing bubble 2.0 data that quite frankly, even I was shocked by is buying with co-borrowers. Let's remember that the average person, or I should say people, are putting down only 6% as a down payment on a new purchase. That equals about $14,000. But people or these new buyers are so broke in the United States that they're actually having to take on another person into the mix or bring on another person as a co-borrower. Look at this, in Miami, 40% of the home loans have a co-borrower. Seattle, 37%, LA, 25%, Portland, 27%, San Diego, 29%. This is happening everywhere in the United States. In the past, you had one borrower that was putting up the house as collateral. So if the bank forecloses, they go after that house and take that asset away. Now, you've got another person that's in the mix that may or may not be living in the house that's putting up additional collateral. So if and when the housing bubble deflates, and remember they only have about 6% equity right now, so if the market goes down by 20, 30, 40, 50% unemployment goes up, they're not only gonna lose their house, but potentially assets of a person that's not even living in the house. They've got a lot more to lose. If you guys want more facts that nobody's talking about, 
regarding Housing Bubble 2.0, check out this content and I will see you on the next video.